Ha. Hello once more. Here yeah, I come once again. It's another day of production and I know you have subscribed already. But if you have not, please subscribe. Uh, today, as I've always told you, my mission is very clear. To create that necessary symbiotic relationship between the medical laboratory scientists and you, you the public. Yes, uh, we want to have a very good health. The health that is sustained both of us. And that's why I am taking this thing to make sure that we are all educated. Knowledge is power. The more we know, the better our health. Uh, today, it shall be on roundworms. Ask Kari to be specific. Roundworms are a problem all over the world. And the kind of problem they create is such that there are no emphasis made on it. Why? Because it is more of uh, economy countries that really have it. You want to talk of underdeveloping countries that they continually have these water problems, uh, sanitation problems, and hygiene problems. They are the ones still experiencing warm infection and warm infestation. But the globalization problem has spread this problem internationally. Whether you are keeping your environment free of feces, that people don't uh, defiscate outside and this, the contamination is minimal, but the infestation is already there and it will be transferred as it is being taken from one globe to the other. One I want to talk about is Ascaris. It's the largest one and it resides in the small intestine. The population every day, once the female lays its egg, it lays over 200,000 eggs daily. So you can imagine that it can never go into extinction. It is just for us to continually manage uh, what we have. But like I said, it is a general problem and we must uh, look take care of it. Worms generally are regarded by the people as something that should be in our system. Yes. It should be in our system if we allow it to be there because the worm inf infection uh, does not really discomfort us. On the when it start perforating, they perforate the numens and co. The uh, population becomes too large, and then we have a serious problem that it eventually help end in death. I have seen uh, people who say they have typhoid fever, whereas it's just worm infestation. Luckily, they are deworming, but. Uh, is there the money? Do, do people have that money to buy these warm expellers? So it's the, the need for taxations and co will be emphasized. So as we go on in this journey of mine, I am trying to now let you know the laboratory diagnosis to open you more to what is our problem as regards warm infestation, warm infection. Why do they call it warm infection? So you, li you listen and then follow, uh, watch the video to the end. But meanwhile, if you like what you are seeing, please click the like button. S subscribe because you will always be notified any time that the, uh, my recording is out. For sure, it's always going to be out every Thursday. Yes, it is very easy for us to downplay the problem of uh, random infection or infestation because we believe we can always take warm expeller or at best we prepare very well that we are uh, very hygienic and uh, we do all our sundry. But have you forgotten that the salad, the vegetables and all that you eat are gotten from where people probably have participated and probably they even use fertilizers that are human waste. These are sources especially for randoms like Ascaris lobicoindis. So the best way one could advise is that these vegetables are treated with vinegar, five percent containing five percent acetic acid, so that you do not get infected with roundworms. The five percent uh, acetic acid is very effective in uh, removing uh, roundworm hex, the hex, and uh, destroying entering in and destroying them. Perfectly. So we go on to talking about random infestation or infection uh, in laboratory diagnosis. How many shapes of worms are there? There are basically three tapeworms, roundworms, flatworms. We call them cestode, nematode, and trematodes. 
the roundworms are cylindrical. That's why they call them roundworms. And their characteristics are just what I will present later. Why are they treated as microorganisms? Is because uh, they have this microscopic examination that has to be done using the, examining the, the fecal samples or blood samples, depending on uh, where they are found. And then you are able to see the ova or the cysts of this parasite. The hard dot parasites are visible, very microscopic. So, but nevertheless, the identification, the area where they start the causing problem for us in human is the oval and system. That's why the infestations are usually used for parasites that are on the surface. They are not they are ecto parasite, not uh, necessarily uh, inside. So the endo parasites are found inside human, and that's why uh, they are called infection. So ratworm. But like Ascaris, one could ascribe and say, rad I mean, Ascaris infection, but uh, the necessary immunological response that one would get is not uh, uh, so much uh, like the IgG, IgM, and stuff, but more of the IgE. Uh, the immunological response, like I had just said, the phylum, they belong to the nematodes, like that. As Celia said, and their genus is uh, Ascaris. You have so many randoms, and these names are endless. Uh, Ascaris lobicoides, when you put lobicoides as a species, you have identified to the species level. Enterobius, uh, Vermicularis, Strongylides, Stricuri, Stricuria, and so on and so forth. The characteristics of them are two, is they are non segmentary cylindrical and they possess a shiny skin. They have mouth and sleeps where they used to feed. Male worms are about a fourth of the females. Well, the task carries. The male also has copulatory organs. The female possess ovaries that eventually uh, lead to the uterus, just like in human. Uh, the the uh, vulva is very close to uh, the anus. The female are viviparous, uh, viviparous. That is, some laid eggs that is oviparous and uh, some lay i mean come out with uh, lava is the lava you see straight most of the medically important nematode are soil transmitted that is through the fecal root and the one i'm discussing today is ascaris lovicoides which is soil transmitted uh, the laboratory uh, uh, diagnosis preambles is as follows we want to make sure that quality assurance is in place to in order for us to be able to have a very rapid, reliable and reproducible result. If your result is not reproducible, then you cannot call yourself uh, a medical laboratory scientist. So is that reproducibility that makes it very reliable and uh, you must factor in that the result must come out on time so that it can aid in treatment so that whatever uh, situation the patient is in can be easily resolved. So we want to talk about the collection and transportation of specimens. It must be collected uh, in a, a leak proof. The, 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 the container should be provided and then uh, clean and dry. Once it's provided, the information and everything will be put on top, name, address, word, or whatever. This is a sample of the uh, uh, but you can see the still still contain it. Uh, well, this is blood sample, which may not necessarily be important. Uh, the microscopic examination is very necessary. If you want to use the equipment or the, the microscope, you must take care of all these parts, the ocular lens. If you don't put it in top shape, clean it well, you, you will find out that uh, you are not seeing clearly. The, there are times it has happened where the objective is not seeing uh, things, it's, it, it is affected. So you must have controls that will really help in uh, proof, uh, showing that what you, uh, you want to see can be seen with the microscope uh, presently. Not because you have used it before, it works and is able to identify, but you must use the positive control to be able to confirm that this microscope 
I see. So every aspect of it are clean and maintain in top shape. That's why I emphasize labeling uh, a whole uh, microscope. The equipment we use is the light microscope, the centrifuge, the PCR machine, and many more. But make sure that they are all calibrated to be uh, reliable. If not, your result may not be reliable. The light microscope is usually used mostly for uh, the overall of As Since we are concerned with uh, 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 ascaris, not because it's the reagents we use are bottled and uh, uh, placed. The quality of that reagent is very important if your result must be reliable and still must fall within stipulated value and no contaminants. Common reagents used for uh, 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 parasites is uh, saline and uh, double iodine. Manufacturer directive are for performing tests must be observed, must be followed. Because you, you don't say because you know how to do it, then you don't follow. You don't know what they have done with their uh, reagents. And so you want to uh, follow the instruction and maintain that so that whatever comes out of it will be quality, result, reliable, and uh, reproducible. The, these directions are written down for the assistants to follow. That is, you can also read it down. Write your own technique if uh, the, the does not come, the reagent does not come up with the technique. Images of parasites are always put on the wall so that it will aid in uh, uh, identifying this parasite the over the resist. If you probably see something that looks similar, at times you see artifacts that you want to call uh, uh, over the egg of the organism. It is very necessary, especially for people undergoing the training, to see the images of over and sister parasite in order for us to be them to be motivated. It is also helpful to participate in external quality control in order for the standard of the laboratory to be reliable. The reporting must be such that you employ people who are very wise. I mean, they believe most. We understand the reason for this uh, re result to be reliable and reproducible. So the the entry of results in case they want to retrieve the results is very important so that they record very well and they need to go for training. Everybody needs training so that you can always know the level, keeping abreast with the international standards and never falling below the standard. Reports should be written clearly and neatly on form and register. The microscopic examination, you can see the uh, oval of ascaris always appear like this. It comes, the female lays the head. It lays both fertilized egg and unfertilized. The fertilized egg always have content inside, while the uh, unfertilized is almost uh, without all the usual uh, thickness, the thick wall around it. So, oh, this is the real one. You can imagine this is Ascaris uh, species. The, and uh, it, it called from uh, the Springer, BMC Springer uh, Nature. So I, I had to bring it out so that you see how long it is, 2 centimeters. Ascaris lobicoidy is the longest nematode, the longest uh, or whatever you want to use, largest round one that uh, stays in human. The, the usual residence is to stay in the small intestine. When you uh, come, when it won't ingest it through the mouth, it goes, it migrates all around from to the liver to the lungs and then go back straight after it must, the lava, that is the lava that is migrating. The, the egg is mature and it now migrates into the area of the small intestine after it's able to gain access back into the small intestine. If it doesn't gain access, that's why you see the one coming out from people know some at times you want to shout that I ah, look at what is happening because it cannot find itself its way back. It's, by the time it's migrating to the lungs, it usually make people cough. It's that coughing that is also useful in diagnosis. It's not every cough 
that is uh, bacteria. Some could be as a result of ascaris or, do I say, worms infestation. We need to now do advanced tests. At times, you want to do concentration of tests because the usual identification under the microscope using uh, taking just a small size of the stool from a very important part, the soft part, because that's where you find most of these parasite eggs. They do now emulsify in saline and uh, examine under the microscope. But majority of times, you miss the parasite over. That's why many times patients can come and you find that the results that comes out is there is no over of parasites. Whereas the parasite head, the parasite is still inside and the head is also inside it. But because it's not in the large quantity, you want to believe that uh, it's not there. But it is there if you concentrate the use the concentration method. The concentration method with, is very useful in knowing even the level of parasitemia, that is the level of parasite in the feces, in the human, in the person. So by the time you weigh it, the quantity of uh, sample, I mean the specimen collected, and uh, you put it in the formal, uh, formal saline or formal water containing ether and uh, ether acetate, then you centrifuge it. The deposit is what you examine. The supernatant is discarded. The deposit, the deposit is what is all the debris are on the upper layer of the centrifuge. So the deposit is where you are able to identify the micro, uh, the over of the parasite of Ascaris lobicoides. There is also a need at times that you want to identify the species, probably you believe that this is not lobricoides, it could be another form of Ascaris. Because right now, the swine uh, species, they call Ascaris, zoom, is also something that is becoming zoonotic. So that this can be transferred from the pig to human. So you want to now do the PCR test to confirm this. So the PCR test follows the process of uh, the maturation, annealing, and extending, uh, elongating. That is if the, the extracted uh, parasite, because you have to take a piece of the parasite and uh, you emulsify, you extract the DNA, and then you process it to amplify it to the level where you can now do the, the necessary gel electrophoresis to be able to identify the species that appear in it with a